Hi, how are you all doing today? I'd like to tell you how we can have french fries on Mars. First off, if you don't like french fries, then you might as well leave. When we think about space travel, the first idea that pops into our head is the thought of a rocket or a spacesuit. But how many of us actually give any thought to what we're going to eat when we get there? If the movie The Martian is to be believed, then by recreating an Earth-like soil, we could, in theory, create farms on Mars. However, while the Martian was mostly accurate when it comes to agriculture, it is, in fact, impossible to grow potatoes on Mars. Unless you are Matt Damon, of course. And this is simply due to a lack of phosphates in the soil there. However, what if we were to take soil out of the equation? Hydroponics would give humanity the ability to create self-sustaining bioorganic systems anywhere, including new planets or on a space station. Hydroponics is actually used a lot in Hawaii, which, which you might find surprising because we have some of the best soil on the planet. But a hydroponic system beats out traditional agriculture tenfold. Crop yields from a hydroponic system are seven times faster and often four times larger than, when, than from plants that are typically grown in soil. And we grow tomatoes, lettuce, and coffee. I mean, I know a lot of you have tasted Kona coffee, but that's probably not grown in hydroponics. I've established a prototype here at the HPA eLab with my mentor, Dr. Bill Wecking, over the past two years. And over these two years, I've had some ups and downs, but the main points of my experiences have been with Franken tomatoes, what I personally call Frankenstein's tomatoes, uh, because they're extremely large and destroy everything that grows beside them. Next, with a Basil that made the entire building smell like the streets of Sicily on National Pesto Day. And finally with mint, good old mint. Many of you may enjoy chewing mint gum. I hate it. I hate it so much just because I spent a week wrangling this mint trying to kill it. And I'm pretty sure it tried to kill me too. It just simply refused to die. It grew out of every nook and cranny Honestly, I'm pretty sure it's still plotting its revenge against me. One of the major, with hydroponics, one of the major innovations that can be made is with automation. That means that I can goof off while my plants are growing. My system runs on a timer where a pump delivers fertilizer and water every 15 minutes or whenever the plants basically need a top up. And the main example of this is when I went home over the summer. I live in Jamaica. That's 5,062 miles away. And now I can have no interaction with my system while I'm at home. But what I returned to was nothing short of surprising. If this was a regular farm, I can only assume that most of the plants would have been dead. But when I returned, my entire system had collapsed completely, not because of, not because of a lack of nutrients or water, but simply because the tomatoes had actually grown too big for the tower that had collapsed under its own weight. Now, with the current rate of growth of private and public space industries, such as SpaceX, one in every 100 people will spend an extended period of time in space. Let me repeat that. One in every 100 people. That means one person from this room tonight we get to spend an extended period of time in space. And I think that since none of you have left, that you want to enjoy french fries while you're there. And if we're going to do that, then we're going to need an accessible way to grow potatoes on Mars. And I think that hydroponics is that solution. Thank you.